I just can't see, dude. We're live though. Right now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> We're live. All right, so we got a new light up there. Kurt's blind. I'm blind. Uh, but it does make us look sexier, I think. <laughs> right? <laughs> look at my wrinkles, man. Like, no, you can just... see now. <clears throat> oh. Makes everything look worse. <laughs> What did you say? It's not a magic light? It's not a magic light. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Hopefully you can all hear us because we didn't use the microphone tonight. We wanted to try it, but we got new things in it. Like, I think we were, I think we're right on time. Mm -hmm. Dude, I don't know if I can do that light. It's bad. It's, it's really bad. Like, we're going to turn it off? Yeah. All right. I can't look at it. We're going to turn off the light. Yeah, we're going to guide you guys to the light, but this light, we're not getting you there. Go ahead, Kurt. No dead air. No dead air. Get the light shut off. All right. See, it didn't even do nothing. Getting it? No. Oh, yeah. I can still see my wrinkles. <laughs> All right. We're good. Man, I'm fat, dude. What are, probably, what are we tuning into? Put a pillow there. It hides it. No. <laughs> Why do we do that? All right. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I see. Now, where's that? Hey. All right. So, we're going to open up in prayer, I guess. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here tonight. Thank you for the opportunity that you get us, you let us share. Thank you, God, just for everything that you have done for us, everything that you have blessed us with, and that you get let us have another day here to share your name. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So uh, if you haven't realized this yet, or if this is the first time you're getting to watch this, I'm John Hayne. And this I'm Kurt. All. Kurt. All. Uh, this is Overcoming with us. Uh, I guess pretty much we just go on here and show you like you don't have to be intelligent to share Jesus Christ. That's that was pretty good, wasn't yeah. it? And you can have fun. <laughs> and you and you can have fun following the Lord. Uh, yes, we <laughs> won't go there, but yes, we have a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <Kurt. laughs> uh, So, um, <coughs> but tonight we were going to talk about yeah. I don't think we really had nothing to talk about. So we pre So if you're on there, if you're watching, I don't know, I see one viewer on there. Uh, if you got something you want us to talk about, too, we can talk about that, too. Uh, but, um, so overcoming. What are we going to overcome? You know, there's a saying out there that I really don't like. Easier said than done. And it's like, why is it easy? What's that? Uh, whatever. That was Masaka with the messenger. Yeah, we just like try to buy up some time, but also share the gospel as we're doing it. You know, perseverance. What's that word? Is that perseverance. That? Yeah. What's that? Do you know the definition of that? No. Just to hang in know. there. Just to hang in there. I don't know. I guess so. I don't know why that word just to came get up. through. To get through. You know, and then easier said than done. And we go through life and. You know, we think that it's so hard. We, we think the things that we're going through are so hard. And really, it's just a growing experience. And uh, I don't know who's watching behind. We can't see. You guys are too far away for us. We're old people. Well, I'm getting older. Comment? Kurt's old. Yeah, I don't know if that's a comment or is uh. it just somebody watching. Dude, they're going to nope. see your boogers, man. Uh. <laughs> but, uh, so, and then we can have joy doing it. And, you know, as we sit here and we wait upon the Lord, like we literally wait upon the Lord. We wait to die, I guess. I don't, I don't even look at that that way. It's almost like when you come to Jesus, you like, you defeated death. <laughs> really? Because, because you get to go and you get to live eternity. I, no, now they said something. I can read that little piece. That's all. Don't write too much or I won't be able to read it. But if you do like one word at a time, I might be able to do it. I can't. I just see there's something there. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh no it's good to have you on here like uh we're the dummies that are trying to bring people to christ so it makes it fun so uh christians for dummies, christians for dummies. Uh, there is a bible out there bible for dummies or yeah bible for dummies i have that but perseverance i can't say that word now i should have never thought of that word perseverance yeah perseverance yeah that's so bad and uh easier said than done uh so go ahead kurt <laughs> I had a squirrel there for a minute. What? <laughs> <laughs> the 
are you doing, man? <laughs> well, you're just the eye candy on here. <laughs> so, That's pretty bad because I can't even do that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, we really do know what we're doing sometimes, I think. Uh, but really, you don't have to know what you're doing to share Christ. You truly don't. Like, I mean, we, we think we have to know it all and everything else, and, like, and then easier said than done. Why do you keep telling me that one? Like, because it's really easier. It's really easy. It, it's simple. Like, all we have to do is go out there and give people the choice to make that decision. And bro, I'm not going to get it out of the way. Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is your Lord and you believe that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's that easy. Just go and confess that Jesus Christ is your Lord. Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead for your sins and everything else. Ta-da! You start that relationship. Yep. Don't have to get down on your knees and beg them to try 500 times or anything else. You just start that relationship. And once you start that relationship, all that miserableness, all that hatred, all that, all that stuff that goes, it just goes away. No, it doesn't, Johnny. Yeah, it does if you really just let it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Surrender. Surrender. Go ahead, Kurt. <coughs> Give me that one. I know you can remember surrender. Surrender. Yeah. That's whenever you just give all your problems to God. Lay him at the altar. That's easier said than done. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people think that, though, Confess man. your sins to God, and he forgives them. Wipes them clean. Well, I'm going to sin again. What, what do you do then? Well, once you accept Christ, he gives you the Holy Spirit to convict you. Oh. Uh... And that makes it easier to... So it's clean better, up your life. It's better than that wooden paddle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so, I don't know. We're going to go down that rabbit hole. Here we go. Catch up. Ready, guys? Uh, we're going down a rabbit hole. Well, if you sin, well, I'm saying I'm sinning. Am I going to hell? No, you're saved. Amen. You guys get that? Like, if you're sinning, well, what if I'm not saved and I'm sinning? Am I going to hell? Yeah. Oh, you're going straight to hell. So, <laughs> Really come just down to that choice, like we said, Romans said nine, and you literally get to go to heaven. Like you, you if your heart, if you confess to Jesus, and you believe in your heart, you have to believe it. Like there's no, and you know, maybe that's where a lot of people fail. Like they don't believe it. They believe in it one day, and then they believe. We just, I, I hope you guys come out Sunday night for "Don't Let the Enemy Have a Seat at Your Table" because it was really, really good. I'm glad I got to sit in on a class because we switched the youth around a little bit. And uh, we got to get our cups filled up a little bit, and it it was spot on. Like, and yeah, it's it's. I don't know. I guess I look at things like the stuff that I feel like is milk stuff. I I guess some people think it's meat stuff, and they're like they're just getting it. Like, and then that person hearing word, I had to go through that to get where like to where. It's not like I'm trying to say I'm better than or anything else. I guess I just went through a lot more. And it's like, I, I watch people bang their heads off of walls. Yeah, we're all different stages. Yeah, and, I, and I, I hate seeing people banging their head off the walls because I love them. I love everybody. And I just want to see them grow in the Lord. Like, And you don't have to bang your head off them walls. And, you know, I used to do these videos with the pastor here. Squirrel Cage. I, I'm Squirrel Trail. So I, I should just say that every time we go. I used to do these videos with the pastor way back in the day. And he would talk the whole entire time. And I would just sit there like Kurt. <laughs> and uh, so that's what I tried not to do. So I tried to, like... But whenever Kurt doesn't say nothing, then I got to do it. And then I feel like, oh, I'm taking over. Man. Like, do you guys realize, like, we want you guys to step up. We want to lift you up. We want to be there for you. Like, we, all we have to do is be your stepping stone, man. Mm -hmm. Like, so if you're sitting there all alone saying, I'm going through life and I'm hating life and everything else. And I'm miserable. I don't know how to get out of it. Da, 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 da. But you don't want to go out and do anything and come and see people and everything. That's your own fault, man. Like, nobody's going to know unless you share. So... Get in touch with one of us. Get in touch with, get in touch with a good church, man. I don't even, it doesn't even have to be one of us, man. Just get out there. And run. You do have to get around like-minded people. Mm -hmm. If you're going to sit there and hang out with your, I don't know, people that you can't stand, that gossip, that, I don't know, drugs and alcohol, whatever. I, I love drug and alcohol people, too. Like I mean, I love all the gossipers, too. Like, but if you're, if you're fresh, if you're coming in fresh, and you're really just starting to come to the Lord, it's going to be hard. They're going to tear you up. Because the devil's going to try to get a hatch you. But now that you're with the Holy Spirit and you're saved, the devil can't dwell within you. If you haven't accepted the Lord, the devil's going to dwell within you. Like, because the Holy Spirit's not there to clean him up. All right, so you're going to sit there and you're going to think, this is the only way I have. I can remember feeling that, that I can remember feeling that feeling. I lived with the devil for like 24 years. 
And I can remember there was no way out. This was the way I had to live my life. And this is how miserable I had to be because this is who I was. And this is what I did. There ain't no way I can be safe for the things that I did and everything else. Until I fully surrendered. I was suicidal and everything else. Until I fully surrendered. And then I felt the presence of the Lord come in. And I was like, whoa, what is this? And then that's when the life started changing. And the more I changed, the closer I got to the Lord. So when we sit there and we were talking about go back to where we were sinning and being safe. When now, whenever I was sinning, I was like, oh, dude, that hurt. Like, I felt it. But I also understood that I was all right. But the more, the less that I saw it and sinned, the closer I got to the Lord. And then I got more hungry for that. And then I started, I want more and more and more and more. I almost became a drug <clears> that <throat> way. And then God's like, all right, this is what you're going to do now. Patience. I'm like, no, dude. No. Nope, not happening. Because, yeah. Like, he'll, he'll make you do it. But like, if you really ask the Lord to come into your life. All right, Kurt, I just gave a whole bunch of stuff there, man. You ought to have something by now. So whenever you surrender and you let God take over, and he gives you that Holy Spirit, so the strongholds that Satan had on you, you can let them go. He won't have that hold on you because you'll realize that that stuff just doesn't matter anymore. And it's easier, I mean, some stuff everybody struggles with, but what it comes down to is forgiveness of yourself. Once you realize that, you're like, okay, yeah, I don't need this in my life anymore. I can get rid of it. God, God forgave me that, so I don't need that no more. And you just move on and you filter yourself out. <clears throat> and then, basically, you just keep on going. You share Christ with people that you meet you keep doing whatever God tells you to do because people can see that you're a Christian by your fruits so if you're acting grumpy and mopey and they're gonna be like I don't want to be that kind of Christian that's what he is you know you want to be spontaneous upbeat you know polite not a grump <laughs> And you know the yeah, now I, I can remember when I went through a phase. Oh, that's gonna block my whole head. I went through a phase to where all right, uh, if I'm with God, I gotta be happy, joyous, and free. I come to a phase where I was faking that, and I was letting people think that I was happy, and I was joyful and everything else. And really, I didn't know what hap real true happiness was. This was like when I first got sober. So this was like I don't know, probably about eight, ten years ago, and. I remember putting on that show for people. And it was like, wow, I, I don't want to have to put on a show, Lord. Like, I thought I could be happy with you. We're not always going to be happy in the Lord. We're, because it's gonna, he's going to get us out of our comfort zone. And I'm telling you, whenever... <laughs> I did, I'm not going there, Kurt. I didn't mean, like, that. I can't believe where we're going. But, uh, yeah, I just well, he's giving for a reason. I, that's an inside story. Uh but he gets us out of our comfort zone, and that's what he wants. He wants us out of that zone so we don't stay where we were because if we're not growing and going towards him, like, and sometimes we go through the stuff where we have to trudge through it, and we don't like trudging through that mess. And when we say trudge, that's like in knee-high deep stuff. Like, and it's like, no, dude, I don't want to do that. Like, I can remember, all right, I got to go to church, but I'm miserable today. I don't want to go. Like, and here I am. I had to put on a face. I had to lift people up. I get sick of lifting people up sometimes. Like, dude, I'm like burned out. Like, I don't want to lift people up today. I want to just be miserable and I want to go back. No, dude, you can't do that, Johnny, because that's what we're here for. That's the only thing we're here for is to lift you guys up, to bring you to the Christ, to let you see what God can do in your life. And there were days that I used to fake, like, being happy and everything else. I said, I'm not doing this no more. I'm not going to fake it. And then I asked myself, why couldn't I truly be happy every day? And people say, well, you can't be happy truly every day. Dude, if you really understood the miracle that Christ did on that cross, you can be happy every day that he gave you another life to breathe and give his name. And that's what it was. I was looking at my own selfish inhibitions like I had to be happy. I wanted the worldly things to make me happy. I wanted to feel that old happiness and everything else. But once you get over that part, then you get the true peace and the true happiness and the true understanding of where you're at in your walk with the Lord. And whenever you're feeling like, you know, I don't want to go to church today. That is the best time to go to church because there's a message for you. And you don't even realize it until you persevere and push through that and get to church. 
and get that message. And then you realize, wow, that was dumb. <laughs> that was really dumb, me feeling like that. And you, everybody gets to that point. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been there. You've been there. Mm -hmm. You know, even get to a point, I can remember getting to a point to where, like, I guess depression is what people would call, I hate putting names on things, because really it's our own selfish, oh, I had depression, I get medicine and everything else. No, it's uh, because we don't want to do nothing about it. We want to just take a pill and do something. If, if you honestly push through that, like, I used to have anxiety to where I walked into a building and I could not go, my wife used to eat by herself. I'd hurry up and go in and figure, and figure out my food, and then I'd run out. Like, that's how much anxiety I have. I'd go into Unimart and a bunch of people would come in, I'd start throwing shelves and everything else, like, I was nuts. And the only way I got through that was, all right, I'm going to put myself in here. I'm going to make me stand here until I can get over this, until I can understand what's going on. So what, what I used to do is depression. I would curl up in a ball, and I'd lay in my bedroom for three to four days, and then I'd finally come out. I'd waste three to four days sitting in my bedroom. That was not growing the kingdom of God. So the devil wants you to sit there. Like, that's where he wants you at. He wants you to be, oh, I can't go out there in front of 500 people and say, I love you, Jesus. Like, why not? Because of that, you're going to say, because I got anxiety, I got depression, I got all this, uh, whatever. Like, I just can't be around that many people, social anxiety. Like, and that's a lie from the devil, because if you put yourself in there, you can start to work through it. But if you never put yourself into it, to understand what is going on inside yourself, because you want to, you don't want to, we don't think we can grow anymore. Like, we think we're stuck there, and you're not. If you're still alive and breathing, God wants to use you for something amazing. Amazing. Like, big, huge. Like, think outside the box, because God is so far outside the box. And push through, persevere, push through everything that you're going through. And it's really that simple. If you have anxiety and social anxiety, go up to Walmart, stand in Walmart all day long. Do it. Like, that's what, I, I guarantee it's going to help you after a week. You're going to be like, oh my God. I can remember when I hated shaking people's hand, my sponsor made me go up to the Walmart and shake everybody's hand that was going through that door. I'm like, dude, you're kidding me, man. Like, About an hour later, I'm like, this is so dumb, dude. Can I stop now? Like, yeah, dude, you over it? Yeah, I go up and shake anybody's hand. I'll give them a hug. And I hated hugging people, too. Dude, when I when I got hugged, I was like, they're going to touch my butt or something. Like, I, I, like I'm telling you, like, I, it was the stuff that goes through your head. It's like, all right, go ahead, Kurt. I can ramble on all day on this one. And so if you're if, if you're struggling with something and you you pray that you want God to take it away, this is the funny part. God will not always take it away like that. But boy, will He give you opportunities where you'll be in that situation and you'll be like, for the first I don't know how many times, <laughs> I was like, man, this sucks. Why am I in this predicament again? Well, guess what? He wants you to persevere on your own. <laughs> he wants you to figure it out to work through it by his teaching, through his Bible, through his word, to get through it. He's not going to just do everything for you, although sometimes he does. And then there's like some things that I've been through in my life that <clears throat> whenever I wasn't saved, I thought like, wow, I quit smoking. No, I didn't quit smoking. God take that, took that addiction, that want away from me. That wasn't me, and it took me a while to realize that. Same thing with drugs and alcohol, gambling. I'm still working on that one, <laughs> but I'm getting better. <laughs> I get opportunities all the time because there's gambling machines everywhere. Of course, I don't really care for them. My gambling's like, uh, I want to win this camper. I want to win this <laughs> truck. And but I'm getting better. <laughs> yeah, and like he was saying, like. Uh... He's not, he might not do it right away and everything else, but he can. Yeah, and he can. Uh, don't ever forget about that. But he wants us to grow, too. Like, so a baby, you have to do everything for. Like, and as you grow up, then he lets loose a little bit. Like, here, you can go out and do this now on your own. And then when you grow up to an, what, 18-year-old now, I guess? I guess they're not 18s. They're like 30-year-olds now. But, uh, <laughs> or 30, uh, which way is that? 18-year-olds are like 10-year-olds. So when they, they had to be 30 to really reach 18. Is that how that mindset is now or something? <laughs> wow, you got me lost in that one. <laughs> yeah, but they're, they're actually younger and younger as they get older. And like, but uh, that's fine, childlike faith. Yeah, there we go. We'll go around with that one. Uh, but as you grow, God wants to give you more leeway, more things to do. Like in, 
why don't you just take it by the horns and just go out there and do it? Because if we sit there and we wait on, like, we're, we're allowed to wait on God and everything else, but God wants us to do it. Wants us to want to do it. Like, if you had, I don't, I don't know, I can't go out there and preach Jesus on the street. Because i got to wait until God tells me to. Bull. That's a lie from the devil. And you can go out there and you can preach Jesus wherever you're at. And right now, wherever you're at. If you're literally watching this with a person or whatever, or you're watching this in your car or at, at work maybe. I, I'm praying that maybe you're working watching. Go out to somebody and tell them Jesus loves you, that they're awesome, whatever. You know, I thought that was the dumbest saying whenever I first came in here. I love you, Jesus loves you, and you're awesome. What was the saying? But I'll tell you what, that sums it all up in one nutshell. And it's so easy to say. Just to go out there. Now, I mean, it makes you, yeah, it does make you feel kind of weird and everything, but it gets you out of that comfort zone. And it's like, oh my God. Like, you know, I, I do, what I do, I go out and say, hey, you got a relationship with Jesus. They either tell me yes or no. Like, then they'll either talk to me or they won't talk to me. And so it's just, it's just the way you do it. Like, I, the way I do it. I don't know about nobody else, probably knows it as crazy as I am, but, uh, but it gets you out of that comfort zone. And, and yes, I'm not to where I want to be. I want to lay hands on people out in public, like, and be like, dude, Get up out of that wheelchair. Jesus loves you. And yeah, and I keep on thinking, like, do I have to wait for God to tell me that, Lane? But if it's going to, if even if it doesn't, even if he doesn't get up out of that wheelchair, at least the Lord's looking down on me like, nah, he did it. He did it, dude. Like, that's where, that, like, if we can get our mindsets there, because we can share, we can share what politics and everything else so easily. Like, and I, I mean, we can talk about it. We know everything about politics, right? Everybody knows everything that's going on with politics. They know who's going to get whatever's happening overseas and everything else. All this stuff. What did you say? What is the second verse in Acts 2? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. What do you mean? What's Acts? Like, do we act like a monkey? No, dude. It's like, how come we don't know as much as we know about the gospel as we do politics or everything in our day in our daily lives, like because Jesus should be the main focus of your daily life. And I wasn't always there either. I'm still learning. Like, man, I don't know what everything I have to say. I don't know everything, but I'm telling you what, I'm every day I am studying, I'm learning, I'm trying to get to where I need to be and everything else. And there ain't nowhere to need to be, but it's just like I want to grow closer to the Lord. And as I grow closer to the Lord, miracles happen daily. But I already know the true miracle, and that's what he did on that cross whenever he come back to life. But go ahead, Kurt, that changes in. <clears throat> and whatever you're dealing with, and you pray about it, and God gives you these opportunities to work through it, he never gives you too much to where you cannot handle it, or he does not give, give you uh, to where you're trapped and you don't have a way out. You always have a way out. And he, he always gives you just enough, nothing too much that you can't get through on your own. And... It may feel like that, but the more you pray about it, it's just, it's, you just look at it like, man, that's so dumb. <laughs> so, I can't believe I struggled with that. What time you got? <clears throat> All right. Seven minutes. So, we started off with easier said than done. So, what I, I, I Kurt's going to end up closing us up in prayer, but what I want to add in there, not, I, I'm hoping Kurt takes this and understands where I'm going with it, so he can add it into his prayer. Is easier said than done. If that ever comes up to your mind or your thoughts or anything else like that, just do it. Just literally do it. Whatever it is that you're saying easier said than done, just go out and do it and see how easy it really is. I, I hope you get what I'm trying. I hope they get what I'm putting down out mm -hmm. there. like Because we do it all the time. I know. I, I don't care. I'm not the only person that's ever done it. But that's what I learned. I learned in perseverance, whatever that word is again, is to push through it. Yeah, like say if you're sitting there with de uh, depression and you're in your room and you're saying, well, it's easier said than done to get out there around people. No, just to go do it and see how easy it really is. And just wave it off the place say, all right, I don't have depression, man. I'm going out there. And do it. Like anxiety, social anxiety or whatever. Like I'm talking about all that. Because we hold on to that stuff. We all live with that. Like even when you're hurt, well, I can't talk to nobody because of what they're going to think of me. No, dude, go out and talk to somebody because that's what you're going to need to do. Do the opposite of whatever you're thinking. I guarantee you, your life will change. All right, go ahead, Kurt. You can go out in prayer. I don't care whatever you want to do right <laughs> now. You got seven minutes, five minutes, six minutes. I don't know. Six minutes. I got six minutes. So I can't pray for six minutes. All right, well, you do whatever. Maybe I can. <laughs> <laughs> we can close early, too, or whatever, too. It's up All to right. You. Lord, I thank you for tonight, for this opportunity to... To help people, Lord, 
So to let them know that with you, they can persevere, they can make it through any situation, Lord, and that you have their back, and that you are, you're with them through and through, Lord. And I just pray that if there's anybody out there watching tonight, Lord, that needs help, that they reach out to somebody, they get into your word, Lord, they, they just cry out to you, Lord, and they bring it to your feet, Lord, because you died on that altar, or on that cross, Lord, for everybody. To take away all our sins, Lord. And that's just such an awesome thing to think about. That there's nothing that we cannot overcome because you've overcome everything, Lord, by dying on that cross and raising three days later, Lord. That's just so awesome. Lord, and I thank you. And God bless everybody that's watching and those who aren't. Any, just anybody that hears, hears your word, Lord. Show them love and mercy like you always do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Love you all. Remember, Jesus loves you. We love you. And, and you, you are, are awesome. awesome.